find out how many people are following me that have more of a Pisces rising or a Libra rising because most of my readings are always down to like Libra rising so I've noticed the theme but I don't know who's watching so comment your rising below. Hi people welcome back to my YouTube it is your girl Honey welcome back people welcome back and those of you who are new here welcome to my channel I have hundreds of videos on here free for you guys to listen to I also have a podcast on my website which has been relaunched again um, there are over, I think, 60 episodes about astrology. I'm currently doing a book series on there, releasing a lot of the books, releasing a lot of the astrology books that I do recommend that you guys have in your library. So if you are interested in listening to the podcast, please click the link in the pinned comment. You will be directed straight to my website should you wish to listen. Okay, so... I want to apologise, I look really tired, I'm in the middle of moving house and moving studio space so um, everything is happening right now, this is Mercury Retrograde and by the way I'm recording this during a Mercury Retrograde so hopefully um, after this period's over, once we go into November time I'll start to feel, I'll start to look a little bit more normal, you know but people we are doing a video today talking all about Venus Retrograde that is going to be happening in December 20. Throughout the video, I'm gonna be breaking it down in terms of what this is going to mean for us. I'm gonna also talk about how it's going to personally affect you based on your rising sign, if you know it, and based on your sun sign, okay? So I recommend looking at both of those based on your rising your sun, so you can see which one you're gonna correlate a lot more with, or perhaps they might both be relatable to what you're about to experience, okay? Many of you may remember in 2020, I made a video where I spoke about Venus retrograde because we had a retrograde then, um, which was in Gemini. And I put out a service, which is, and I can't remember exactly when, but I made a service available, which was about career readings. When I say the service, it's one of the most popular readings on my website. It's been very interesting to see what's been going on over the past year. Now, it's so important that you guys watch the beginning of the Venus retrograde video that I made last year in 2020 because a lot of that information is still very valid to what's happening right here, right now. And I want to just kind of reflect a little bit on that because I feel like a lot of people have forgotten about what's happened. So, yes, COVID happened last year. The whole pandemic started in 2020. And it was a very unusual experience for all of us, but I know we all struggled, every single one of us collectively. And having the Venus going retrograde, Venus, by the way, is your self-esteem, value, worth, your sense of security, your possessions, your items, you know, it's your relationship desires. We were all negatively impacted by this Venus retrograde. When you think about Gemini, Gemini is your, Gemini's Mercury energy. Communication, how you process information, how you generate your ideas, siblings, locally commuting, driving. This had an effect on everybody's daily routines. A lot of people lost jobs last year. A lot of people were made redundant. A lot of people get were on, oh my God, who remembers furlough? A lot of people were on furlough. A lot of people were working, getting paid a lot less. But a lot of businesses formed from last year. And this is the thing, this is very important for Venus retrograde in Capricorn this year, by the way. The planet Venus is our personal pleasures. It's our creativity, but it's also how we make money. And we are very much stuck in this system where we go to work, we come home, oh, I'm too tired to do anything creative, I'm too tired to do anything for myself. We forget that we have these, these interests these personal pleasures because it all gets forgotten about or it, it or we lose so much motivation due to the everyday routine of work you might have kids you might have a very hectic job you might have a lot of responsibilities and you are forgetting how do I have fun again what's my personal pleasures how do I care for myself so last year when we all lost our jobs we were all placed on furlough we had more time to to ourselves whilst we're working from home, we discovered that we have interests, we discovered that we have hobbies, we discovered 
hang on, if I'm getting paid less, where else can I get that money to pay my bills? So you start thinking, you're thinking about, you're becoming, you're using your entrepreneurial mind a lot more. You're thinking about using this, this time to embrace in a hobby. And that hobby could just be your escape from reality. But that hobby could also turn into a business. So last year, a lot of businesses boomed. Businesses boomed for a lot of people. And obviously a lot of people, they lost business. But think about Gemini as ideas. These new ideas were sparking. But also now we're in Capricorn. Capricorn is about longevity, hard work, investments, restrictions, blockages. It's such a heavy energy, insecurities, self-esteem, you know, being reduced even. The energies are gonna be a little bit different and we also have Pluto conjunct. Now Venus retrograding will be conjunct Pluto. Pluto is a planet that represents power, but because this is such a crazy combination, you've got Pluto right there, but you also have the 26 degree Venus. And 26 degree in numerology is number eight, which is Scorpio degree in degree theories. So we're seeing this whole transformational thing there is a lot going on in terms of transformation and a lot going on in terms of power. So with a lot of change happening around us, we have to be open to adapt to those changes. Because I feel like, like I was saying before, there will be a lot to do with government changes, issues with taxes, tax increase, there's always a tax increase, but there will be um, a change in taxes. I feel like people who don't have a lot of power, people who are unemployed maybe, um, who are in a really difficult position in their lives won't have much of a choice based on how the government are going to choose to treat them. You see reductions in how much they're earning or, or how much they're receiving in benefits. I'm just picking up on there being a big power shift going on, you know, when it comes to this Venus retrograde. Venus goes retrograde in December on the 18th, 19th, up until the 28th or the 29th of January. And it will be at a 26th degree of Capricorn and it will not go direct until it's reached the 11th degree of Capricorn. So those of you who have planets that are within that degree, within those degrees of 26 degrees all the way to the 11th degree and within three degrees of the 26th degree and also of the 11th degree, you are going to be personally affected by the Venus retrograde if you have planets in aspects, particularly the cardinal signs. I wanna talk a little bit about the 26th degree. The 26th degree is linked to, I wanna say Scorpio energy, but I look at it as a power degree. Whenever I think of the 26th degree, I think about power, I think about money, I think about management, I think about investments, I think about perseverance, and this is all very much Capricorn linked as well. And when you put, and two plus six is eight, and eight also comes into the equation here. The number eight is authority, it's leadership. If I think of the number eight, I'm thinking about um, currency, money, government, authority, um, leading, leading the people, and not in a way where we're looking for guidance. It's almost like, I'm gonna tell you what to do. I'm gonna make the rules so you can follow my ideas because my ideas lead me to profit. I think about profit. I think about financial security, being, being financially secure, you know, generational wealth. And that's what brings me to changes in the government. I mean, I've made, a good couple videos talking about what I think is gonna happen. I mean, we've already seen like, you know, Mercury retrograde, every time there's a Mercury retrograde, Facebook's down, Instagram's down. You know, I'm looking forward to see if there's gonna be any patterns, you know, um, whenever we have like a Saturn retrograde or a, this, this Venus retrograde because last year I just remember everybody losing their jobs. I remember everybody 
in a financial situation collectively. Whereas now we have Venus retrograde approaching in Capricorn, I am expecting a lot of, every time there's some sort of energy in Capricorn, I'm expecting something from the government, news from the government, the government telling us they have this new plan. And I did say this, I think it must have been, was it last year when we had the great conjunction of Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto, um, where they were going to be clamping down on social media. So as we all know, Capricorn, Instagram is a social media platform that has now become more of a ad platform. There are adverts every time we go on there, but also influencers, celebrities, people are always promoting something. Everything is about buying and selling on Instagram. And Instagram has their North Node in Capricorn. Instagram are striving to be the business, the big business platform, you know, in comparison to the others. They're really pushing for it. And it really takes away their authenticity of what Instagram initially was. Sharing pictures, sharing my plate of food, my cup of coffee. It's just completely changed now. I feel like this Venus retrograde in Capricorn is bringing us to a whole new journey towards how we're making money as a collective. But also a lot of these social media platforms, specifically Instagram, are going to be making some serious changes that's probably gonna affect us and how we like to socialize online. When it comes to small businesses, people like myself will also be affected. You know, um, what sort of business you have. A lot of people actually in the spiritual community are struggling to find platforms that are going to support um, how they're making their money. Because even if you use things like PayPal, right, based on the terminology that you are using, PayPal can very easily close your account. And they're also making it very hard for people to use payment gateways, you know, and this is how people make a living, how people pay their bills, their, their rent, their mortgage, you know, look after their kids, feed their kids, things like that. And what we're seeing is the people who have some sort of control, because I can't get paid online without using a payment gateway. I don't own that. I have to use these very big companies to ensure that I can, you know, receive payments safely. And what I fear during this Venus retrograde is that there are going to, there is going to be more of a clamp down on smaller businesses um, to provide a lot more information than what we're able to give at the moment. And when you also think about it, even the big businesses, and I, how can I forget? I'm not sure if you guys are aware because what's strange is I have not seen anything on the news of what's been going on in Australia. I haven't seen anything. And this is another reason why I like to have social media because social media will show you the things that you don't see on the news. And Australians have been going through it. A lot of them are against the vaccine. And a lot, I think the last thing I saw was um, they made it mandatory to have the vaccine if you are working in construction. So a lot of these people were like, why am I being forced? It's my personal choice. So when you think about companies, businesses, governments, and you think about Venus as profit, there are going to be a lot more changes, even in terms of smaller companies or um, the government paying companies to employ people who do have this fax. And a lot of this is going to be happening over time because we have Pluto slowly making its entrance into Aquarius. You know, it's going to be happening in 2023, 24. It's going to be a big change, a new normal for us. Can I even say no normal? You know, um, but my point is people, they are going to be clamping down a lot. And I feel like it's important that we are looking back on what happened last year and do not forget that the Venus in Gemini is what gave you that imagination. Because even though there are rules and regulations, I always say rules can be bent, rules can be broken, rules can be explored. And there are a multitude of ways that we can still make money without 
having to suffer based on what the government are doing to us, okay? I want to also mention, um, whenever I think about Capricorn, I think about hard work. And when we have a retrograde in a sign, that hard work is going to feel, it's going to make us feel exhausted and tired. No one wants to feel like that. Please take some time off within that time from work to do some self-care. Self-care can literally be just spending longer in the bath, having a, having a cleanse, cleansing your home, redecorating your home, sleeping in bed for a couple more hours, for an hour or two more, um, going to the gym, going to the spa, having a massage. These are small little things that really help your mental health, but it can also really help you feel more cared. Capricorn never likes to take care of itself because it's so focused on the end goal. I want to make sure that I've got my money. I'm very structured. I'm very, you know, I know what's going on. But what about how you're feeling? Is your body run down? And that's why I say you've got to make sure you are taking the time to look after yourself during the retrograde, people. Let's talk a little bit about the rising sign now. I'm going to start off with Aries. So if you are an Aries sun, your star sign is Aries and you want to listen to this part of the video. OK, now because of Venus will be retrograding in Capricorn, this then highlights your 10th house. The 10th house is the house of your career, public image, authoritative figures, government, where you see yourself in the long term. Venus goes retrograde from the 26th degree so that will be towards the end of capricorn and then venus will go retrograde all the way until the 11th degree you need to be very cautious when venus is crossing over the midhaven because this actually happened to my partner last year when venus was crossing over his midhaven and he was offered this amazing job he was so happy he was gassed about it and he could he was about to sign the contract and start and i didn't say anything because i was just worried about oh you know i don't want to jinx it but i had it in my head oh this is during venus retrograde this is going to have a bit of a problem so he had an interview it went really well he was offered the job and he he was never he was never given the contract and there was a big delay on what was going on but his job was delayed and they had to say, well, sorry, we can't offer you the contract right now due to X, Y, Z happening. And it was so crazy that this happened because it was literally, it literally went retrograde over his midhaven. And when it went retrograde, he accepted a different job. Although he was getting paid very well, he was not happy there. And when you start jobs, during retrograde periods, particularly Mercury or Venus, you're not always going to be happy in the long term. So he stood at he stayed at this job a month, a month or six weeks, and literally, when Venus went direct again, it crossed over his ascendant. Because look at Venus as a gift; it's almost like you're being given something. The other job that he initially wanted contacted him back and said hey we need you to start asap can you start asap and he was so happy guessed to get out of his current job that he hated so you guys may be offered a position or something to do with recognition recognition could be um being recognized publicly in terms of your social status social media or it could be in terms of your career. It could also be in terms of your parents. You know, parents may think, you know what, it's time that we gave you the car or it's time that we gave this to you or that to you, whatever it might be. And then that's the gift. Then Venus retrograde takes the gift away. And then you've got to work really hard and you've got to persevere, persevere until Venus goes direct. And then the gift will be given back to you. And it just sounds so annoying because we want to have gifts and, you know, have personal pleasures. But unfortunately, it can't always work out that way. But there will be more of a focus um, during this time for you guys, Aries Suns, Aries Suns and Aries Risings. Your focus will be linked towards 
your career and your jobs. Now the retrograde. The retrograde is designed to make you do a lot more reflecting. And what happens is as it goes through your 10th house, the 10th house is your public image, how you want the public to receive you, how you want your managers, um, the people who have some sort of authority to receive you or appreciate you. There's going to be more thought surrounding that. There's also likely to be problems at work um, during this time, an issue with a line manager or there can be some issues surrounding where you want to be in the long term. The 10th house always directs us to where we see ourselves in the next five, ten years, things like that. And we like to work really hard to reach that end goal. So what happens with you having the retrograde going through here, there's more reflection on that. So what we see is you thinking about changing your career, changing your job, um, changing how you want the public to receive you. It's almost like changing um, how you want your managers to recognise you, maybe even asking for a promotion or a rise or something. And that's OK, but I wouldn't necessarily do that during the Venus retrograde. Maybe have a look and check through your progress reports and just see, is this the right time for me to maybe propose in a month's time um, that I would like a pay rise? But it's a great time to do some reflecting on um, your status. Taurus suns and Taurus risings. You will have Venus retrograding through your ninth house this year. The ninth house is the house of higher learning, foreign lands, language, culture, belief system, freedom, travel. Um, I always look at it as a higher consciousness. Now, Venus is your chart ruler anyway. So whenever Venus goes retrograde, you guys feel it, okay? You guys and Libras will feel it. The, the interesting thing about this feeling is that you guys will feel my money is being affected right now. You guys will feel my relationships are being affected right now. My sense of security, because we all associate Taurus energy with how secure I am, how much money I have, how much food I'm being fed. It's all about being secure and being whole. The retrograde, you will experience threats to that. And because it's not like, it's Capricorn energy. So it pretty much trines, you know, your ascendant anyway. So for Taurus, it won't be horrendous. It will be a lot more challenging for Libras, which obviously I'll get into once I get there. Um, but in terms of Taurus, there's going to be more of a focus on what your personal requirements, your personal pleasures or your needs are. There may be more of a focus on your spiritual development. And this is a great time to invest in podcasts, right? Um, I have a podcast, people, if, if you didn't know. Um, invest in podcasts, invest in spiritual books, spiritual help books, um, retreats. The ninth house is our spirituality. And with Venus going through there, we become a lot more open-minded to exploring or to exploring our spirituality, but it can also link to meeting people because this is also the house of belief systems. And when you have a particular belief system, you're gonna wanna find other people who also have a similar belief system to you. And it's about being a little bit more open-minded, you know, exploring and having people challenge your intellect or challenge your beliefs and engaging in, in a lot of conversation. This is actually a good time for you to um, dive into a new podcast. I have one. Dive into a podcast, um, purchase some self-help books, engage in some sort of dialogue with someone who may who, who could potentially become your mentor or dive into something that's going to really awaken your mind. This is the house of learning. I'm not sure if you guys are, I'm not sure how many, how many of you guys are in education right now that there might be a bit of a delay maybe with receiving some your results, some sort of information. Um, you might even be delayed handing in your own units. You know, there could be something about things being a little bit more delayed in this house. And that's okay. Don't feel pressured to have to apply yourself to fulfill everything in this house. It's just about taking your time and learning a lesson out of it as well. Because remember, this is again, the house of learning. So if there is a mistake that's going to be made in terms of education, in terms of 
learning from someone or learning something but I recommend you spending more time speaking to people who are very deep in their spirituality and getting some inspiration from them. Gemini suns and Gemini rising. This is one for me as well. Um, Capricorn rules your eighth house. The eighth house is the house of death, rebirth, crisis, trauma, transformation, other people's resources, joint finances, inheritances, taboo subjects, etc, etc. This is a very dark house. We can also link this to psychology. However, this house represents money that you may not be in complete control of. And what's really annoying about this um, is that I know exactly what this is probably gonna manifest for me. Um, I have my own business, I'm a small business, and I have everything clear as day on my website. My clients get confirmation emails, I have an FAQ page, I have an email to contact, I have literally everything available so people know what they're getting themselves into before they commit to booking a reading with me. Today I woke up to a client, I'm going to name and shame because I'm getting sick to death of these things happening. Someone called Natasha King Walker, um, who's initially from New York, now living in North Carolina. And the reason why I'm now choosing to name and shame is because this is becoming a big issue. I can send someone a reading to them and they'll respond, thank you so much, my reading, I love my reading, and then do a chargeback. So essentially it's like theft. And it's, begetting, it's, it's becoming more and more common and it's beginning to really piss me off because if you never wanted a reading, you've taken someone else's time, but you wasted my time. And the thing is with these chargebacks is they take months to resolve. It's actually about a two month wait to resolve. And I also, the person who's providing the service gets charged for that. Because I provide refunds, but the person who provides the service has to pay an additional fee to the bank. So I'm only, I'm also losing out on money when I don't need to. And what, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it happens all the time and I'm noticing that it's always Aries women. Aries women, Mars and Virgo, Mars in the sixth house, Mars in Cancer, Mars square sun. It's these specific people. And I also want to name and shame someone else who did the same thing to me called Jalen Monroe. And her partner is called Noah Edwards. And again, I'm not afraid to name and shame these people anymore because now I'm done with this. And this is why I don't want to do readings anymore. So these people will book readings and then say, no, I never received, I never got it. And it's like, but you did. What I'm trying to say is financially, I can be impacted over the next couple of months because of things like this happening. And things like this frustrate the hell out of me because if you never wanted anything and if you don't deserve and if you don't feel like I deserve to be paid don't book with me don't book with me don't waste my time this is the house of banks loans debts so when you have the retrograde going through this house and it will start at the 26th degree the 26th degree you guys need to be prepared to be patient, okay, if you're waiting for feedback from a bank, you know, from any lenders, credit card companies, there may be some issues, there may be some issues in terms of debt, there may be issues in terms of court proceedings, um, being threatened to be taken to court, there may be old debt that comes up that may resurface and you have to take care of it. This is also the house associated with magic. And um, I have a lot of people that support me, you know, and who protect me. I do things to protect myself as well. But I love to manifest things through this house. I have a stellium in my eighth house. So I'm not a vindictive person. I don't do things to intentionally take something from someone. But when people take stuff from me, there will be repercussions for that. I'm Saturn dominant. I'm all about karma. 
and that Venus retrograde going through my eighth house is going to protect me. And I'm talking about everyone who has this retrograde going through this house, you're going to be protected, but it's about taking the right precautions. I also want us to spend some time really looking into our deeper selves. This is the house of psychology, but this is also the house of intimacy, how we are connecting with people on an intimate level, not necessarily just about sex. It's an intimate, intimate way to get closer to somebody else. So look at how you are interacting with people. What more could you possibly do? How could you reflect on that? You know, those of you who are in relationships with people and you want to have more of a intimate moment with your partner this is a great time to look into ways to communicate with your partner to feel more closer to them do something special at home you know cook a nice meal candlelit dinner i don't know do something that's going to be very romantic but also it's a way to bring you and your significant other closer together and this always makes you feel so much better in your romantic relations when you are exploring each other psychologically i always say this is the house that involves the mirror and our relationships represent others and sometimes our significant other is trying to tell us something that we may not be able to see maybe we don't want to see ourselves in the mirror and that's the thing psychology teaches you human behavior but it should also open a door or a window to assign to yourself that you may not have seen because it's so dark or it's so hidden. There's a lot to do with you guys, with all of us, this is us in general, us ourselves, and also our partners showing us, you know, or we show them. And we've got to be open to that. Cancer suns and cancer risings. You guys have Venus retrograding through your seventh house. The seventh house is the house of relationships, bonds, titles, marriages, legal binding contracts. This is the house of other people. Now you guys need to look to see where the 26th degree starts from and that will be your starting point and where you are gonna be affected based on Mercury retrograding. Mercury retrograde will then go all the way through until it reaches the 11th degree where it will then go direct. Cancers, I know you guys don't wanna hear this, but there are gonna be some relationship woes. And for those of you who are single, it's still important you hear what I've got to say, okay? Because it might be a little bit easier, you know, because you guys are single. Those of you who are in relationships, you're going to experience a lot of ups and downs, trial and error, problems, things resurfacing. I always say wherever Capricorn is, right, in the birth chart, it's very important that you are taking some sort of responsibility. I don't know if this is an area where you guys like to control, because some people can be that way, but because you've got Pluto transiting through Capricorn right now, you might have attracted a partner who is very controlling. And Pluto transit the seventh house can, it can have very intimate relationships and they can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people. This is a great time to really reevaluate if this is what you really want. Do you want to date this person? Do you want to be around them forever? Are they helping you to psychologically evolve? Are they supporting you as a, as a partner is supposed to? Or is, it, or is it the other way around? Is it you having to do some more reflecting on your partner, on your relationship? Is this, are you controlling? Are you someone who has these high expectations? Venus in this house has the tendency to bring things back to the surface. It's like bringing up an old argument and that argument, bring, it's like bringing up what someone said six months ago, right? And then that creating a big explosive argument. That should be enough to reflect, do some reflecting on why you brought that up. Because having, remember the seventh house is opposite the first house, the house of self. So there's going to be some reflection on me, on myself, right? So it's important that you are um, studying your behaviours whilst also studying the behaviours of your partner. For those of you who are single, this is actually a good time. 
um, for you to do some reflecting on what you want. You might be in a situationship and please, please, I don't want to hear this word no more. Situationships are just unhealthy. Um, like if it's like an agreement, then I get that. But situationships aren't very healthy. If you are involved in one and you're not getting what you need, remember your Venus is your values. What it is you value, your self-worth, right? And if you feel like, damn, like this guy is not making me feel wanted or he's not saying that saying that he wants to be with me then don't be with him don't be don't give him anything because it's time for you to do some reflecting on what i deserve if you feel like you deserve better trust me you're gonna get it but it's about believing it think about how much continuation of venus in the seventh house and i would use this time to start writing things down you know i'm very big on writing huge on writing your manifestations the things that you want to achieve over time and i would use this time to write down i deserve this i have this like even if you haven't got a partner maybe you want a partner but you've got to write as though you already have a partner so you write things such as my partner treats me great my partner values me my partner is trustworthy my partner makes me happy so you literally write it as though you already have a partner and that way it becomes embedded in your brain <laughs> that i'm content but that would be a bonus for me or i already have it so once venus goes direct again through that seventh house this is where we see you meeting people you know so I definitely would not advise you dating whilst Venus is retrograding. Don't go out there and date people. Don't meet people. Um, because even when it comes to when we conduct synastry readings, we might ask you for if you have the date of when you first met your partner because meeting charts are accurate as hell. And if there's a Venus retrograde, there will be a lot of relationship ups and downs insecurities um in that chart so you want to avoid things like that and this only for a couple of weeks so i wouldn't really recommend you know i wouldn't put yourself in a position to go out there and meet people if you do and you can't avoid it then it happens but if you can avoid it then wait until it's direct this is also the house that links us to um legal things like fees um court fees court hearings and when Venus comes through this house, we tend to hear something from court. So it's very important that you are aware of everything going on. And if you do receive a letter, you know, a notification of what's going to be happening, you deal with that promptly because Venus can make you forget that you have this going on. I'm not sure. I know in America, if you have like a tail light, is it called tell light? Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm British. But if you're caught by a police officer and you get a ticket, you gotta go to court? What? For a fucking ticket? I just feel like that's such a waste of time, taking time off work, the judge even being there. Like, why do you have to go to court for things like that? It's unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, but again, these are things that could possibly happen. Court hearings, you know, you having to speak to a judge, you know, things like that. Um, just be ahead of everything. Try to avoid that if you can. Leo suns and Leo risings. We are talking about Venus retrograding through your sixth house. The sixth house is the house of daily routines, health and well-being, your employment, being of service. Um, so Venus is going to be going through this house. And what we find is that there's going to be more of a pleasure with everyday routines. Pleasure could consist of work. You might enjoy going to work or you may be socialising a lot more at work. You may also be given a promotion. They may offer you, look, man, we, you know, we're happy with your performance at work. You're very punctual. You're very helpful. You know your job. We want to offer you a pay rise or we want to offer you a promotion. Now... Venus has to go retrograde and what we find is that sometimes when Venus goes retrograde 
there can be a delay or a problem that follows after that. So I'm, I will never forget in 2018, um, I think it was Venus retrograding in Scorpio and Scorpio sits in my sixth house. And what really annoyed me, <laughs> what annoyed me about this is that for some reason during this time, I had loads of readings. I'll be out having dinner, you know, on a Saturday night or whatever, have my phone in my bag, I'll check my bag. You've got 10 readings, 10 bookings. What, 10 bookings? I didn't even know. So having all of these bookings and all of these readings to get through, when Venus retrograde came, I was late doing all of them. And I'm late a lot, to be honest with you. I've got a lot of things happening anyway, but that specific time, I was really late. And it was really hard because I think in 2018, I was, I traveled a lot. I was, I was traveling, but I was working whilst I was away. I did readings whilst I was in the airport. I did readings whilst I was sat on a beach. I was, I was still working whilst tending to my family travels. It was a family holiday. But I just felt so unrested because holidays are supposed to make you feel rested, right? I wasn't rested at all. I remember this is the house of your health and well-being and I always say Venus is about your personal pleasures. That should have been a time that I took off, but I couldn't because I didn't take off my website in advance. I didn't make that decision to do that earlier. And then when Venus Retrograde came, boom, all of this stuff to get through. So I recommend for you guys um, during like November time, you know, end of November, early December, if you can book some time off. Um, but I feel like you may not be able, you may not be given that time off. It's like asking your manager, hey, can I have a week off? I know in America, you guys only get two weeks off a year. Two weeks of annual leave, that's crazy. If you can get some time off, do it you 100% like even if it's like a mental health thing I actually look at the sixth house as a physical health thing but it opposes the 12th house which is the mental health and you need to have balance for both of them to work so if you're physically you know struggling to do the, your daily routines because your mental health isn't right it's gonna have a, an effect on your physical health or vice versa if you're feeling depressed if you're feeling tired listen to your body i cannot stress enough how important it is that you are spending this time to listen to what your body needs to have right now because if your body is saying hey your heart is beating way too fast or you're sweating way too much or, or you're getting way too much headaches or your joints are starting to click a little bit more listen to your body he's saying rest up he's saying go and get a massage you know, he's saying use a better, I don't know, stimulating cream on the body. I don't know. Self-care could be anything. But you guys need to work on finding that self-care to prevent feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes as well, we see weight gain when Venus retrogrades or even just comes through this house. And it could just be because, you know, Venus is a sweet tooth. It likes to have nice sugary things but it also likes to engage in things that are personally a pleasure for you. And personal pleasure could literally be, you know what, I really wanna have more ice cream, or I really wanna have a lot more spaghetti bolognese, or I really wanna just enjoy, you know, having more carbs. I don't know, it could be anything. It's a great time to do more reflecting on what your diet has been like, you know, and what more you can do to support yourself. Sometimes, like even for me, there are certain foods that if I eat, it really affects my mood. And it's important that I know what foods make me feel good. So I noticed if I don't eat fruits in, in a day, I feel shit. The color of fruits, how bright, like exotic fruits. I love kiwi, I love pineapple, I love passion fruits, I love dragon fruits. If I don't eat these things a day, I feel shit. I feel lethargic, I feel tired, I just feel shit. And I'm tired a lot, right? But 
the fruits really do make me feel so much better when I have them. So know what your trigger foods are. Really try to assess what's happening with your body during this time. Those of you who are, and I've read a good couple synastries for people who have romantic relationships with people at work, I need you to really revise these things. As the retrograde is going through, you wanna really think, is this the right thing to do? Is this person distracting me from work? Um, or is this just a fling? It's not really something that will end up manifesting into anything. You need to look into, spend more time thinking about that and thinking about if this is what I really want to have. Am I selling myself too short? Am I getting what I want? Am I getting what I deserve? Relationships at work need to be revised. And that could be romantic ones or just the friendship ones. Virgo suns and Virgo risings. Venus will be retrograding in your fifth house at the 26th degree of Capricorn. The fifth house is the house um, associated with Leo, the sun. This is the house of creativity, self-expression, performing arts, um, theatrical arts, children, casual sex, dating, and romance. Now again, Capricorn and Virgo are in harmony, so you guys haven't got the most to worry about, depending on what Venus is going to be aspecting in your personal chart. But in terms of it going to be affecting your fifth house, right? Venus transit through this house is going to make you want to be sociable, go out and also date. Okay. But I want to encourage you guys to go out there, date, have fun. But don't look at this as something that you want to do in the long term. Just going out for drinks, you know, having fun, getting to know people, that's it. Because the thing is, right, when you are dating during Venus retrograde, things don't manifest in the way that it's supposed to. There's always <laughs> some sort of complaint in the long term. Oh, this person is just calling me too much. Or, oh my God, they're not giving me what I want. And this is also about values, you know, how you're valuing yourself in your relationships. And I don't look at the fifth house as a relationship house, it's more so a casual sex, casual dating. The seventh house is more so a relationship house, but obviously the fifth house is where it may start. So if you are looking for a relationship, I don't recommend dating or, or I don't recommend meeting people during the Venus retrograde time. Do some reflecting, you know, on how you express yourself. I like to, um, whenever I have Venus transit this house, I don't give a rat's ass, okay, how I look, because it's the energy that I exude to people. Whenever Venus goes through this house, I get more attention, a lot more attraction, more compliments because of how I feel about myself. So I know for you guys, there's gonna be this feeling of, I feel great, I feel statuesque. I feel beautiful, I feel sexy. You're gonna have all of those feelings intertwine. Now with the retrograde, it's like when you're around a group of friends, you know, and um, your friends might tell a joke and you know, laugh at something or like an old situation that happened and we all kiki and laugh together. You might still be a little bit sensitive about that. And how you express your body language, you know, may be a little bit, mm, that's not even funny, you know, I don't like that. How you're expressing yourself in that moment is going to have, a, have an effect on how people receive you. So I recommend doing some reflecting on how you express yourself to others. Maybe you're in a relationship. Maybe you appear to be single on social media. And let's be real, social media is a place that we choose what we want people to see. There's no pressure to show your partner. There's no pressure to have your partner on display all the flipping time. There's no pressure. People don't even have to see them. But it's how you're displaying yourself. Maybe you take pictures in booty shorts. You know, maybe you're out here messaging and DMing people. You know, who knows? Those actions of your self-expression need to be reflected on to ensure that you are not displaying a, um, something that isn't what it really is things like that is what you've got to think about you know in terms of how you are naturally expressing yourself what can be revised virgo sun virgo rising in terms of your children you know this might be a time where you, you do some reflecting 
on do I want to have kids or let me start buying stuff for my kids that are eventually coming you know you might be pregnant you might start the process of buying baby stuff um Venus retrograding in this house if you already have kids your child might be acting up right now maybe maybe they need additional attention and that's something that you can do you know to really help them so it's a great time to do some to focus a little bit more on your children what are their needs maybe you want to maybe they want to be more creative have more conversations with them what more can you give them to support them Libra suns and Libra risings, you guys are going to have Venus retrograding through your fourth house. The fourth house is the house of the home, foundation, roots, mother, family. And I want you guys to look for where 26 degrees is in your fourth house. Capricorn isn't necessarily happy in this house. And whenever I look at Libra risings and I see Capricorn ruling their fourth house, I see a very beautiful person, a very likable person. Think about Libra as charm essentially and the frustrating thing is surface when you look at them you wouldn't think they come from a very difficult background or they've gone through the things that they've gone through so when capricorn rules the fourth house we're seeing someone who was raised in an environment where they weren't nurtured enough there wasn't enough love hugs or kisses and that has a psychological effect on how you deal with the roots or the core to your emotions so i won't say oh you know libras are very are very much ice queens they're not ice queens they have a different way of dealing with how they feel so the venus retrograde is supposed to encourage you guys to really look at your life and i'm talking about what's surrounding you you know this is your family um, your children. This is how it's associated with what makes you feel secure emotionally. And I do feel like there will be a reflection here in terms of are you getting what you emotionally need from your relationships because your chart ruler is Venus. Therefore, when it goes retrograding, it's going to have a effect on you personally. And because Venus is our relationship desires, our personal pleasures, we also have to relate this to relationships and the fourth house is the core to your emotions. So are you getting what you need from them? Are they spending enough time with you? How have your psychological experiences or your childhood experiences affected how you are in your relationships? Do you have trust issues based on what you witnessed your parents go through, which has an effect on how you deal with your relationships now? We need you to psychologically have a look at why. Where has this come from? Do some reflecting. I like to say to my clients, you know, ask your parents, you know, what happened with you and dad? You know, why did you guys separate? Or what made you go for a man like him? What made you date a woman like her? What, who did you date prior to that? What sort of women do you like to, like, I know it sounds invasive, but sometimes we need the answers that we can't always get so easily. And these answers help us to psychologically understand our inner world and why we have chosen this environment. So I always say do the work so you can just elevate out of this house. Elevate out of here. You might also have grown tired of your home. You might be at home thinking, you know what, I hate this place. You know, it's, it's the drab, it's just too dark, not enough light in here. Do some reflecting on what more can I do? I don't like to recommend starting projects during the Venus retrograde, but I recommend doing a lot of research. So you may collect, you know, interior design magazines. What you should do is a vision board. Create a really big vision board of the type of house you want to have, right? what you want to put in that house and you start collecting things and buying things but you don't actually start the house decorations until the venus retrograde is over once it's over you can start decorating making your house a beautiful environment but it should be really fun you know being creative at home doing research joining interior design groups maybe even speaking to an interior designer who can help you make the house of your dreams scorpio suns scorpio rising you guys have Venus retrograding through your third house. 
The third house is the house of communication, how you process information, where you generate your ideas, and also your learning capabilities. Now, Venus is your self-esteem, value, self-worth, your possessions, your, your personal pleasures, and also how you make money. I always say Venus is like being given a gift. You're being given something. And once Venus goes retrograde, this is where we see problems occurring. So maybe you've been given a gift, but it hasn't been delivered as of yet. There could be delays, because this is also the house of like daily routines, like things that we're so used to every day. Having issues with delivery, guys. Oh my gosh, in the UK, we have a lot of issues with delivery guys scamming us. I got one today, you know, a, a text message today, right here, you know, Hermes, please reschedule your delivery. Let me show you. These text messages, absolutely annoying. And what they do is really annoying. If I order something online, I could use a service like UPS, Hermes, DPD, any service, and I then get a text saying, your parcel was out for delivery, but we need you to pay um, £2.99 to receive it or for it to be re-delivered. And I'm thinking, how do they know that I've ordered something? How, how do they know that I'm with that courier? How do they know? But there's someone who works on the inside. There's clearly some sort of scam internally that's going on. And it's with every single courier that I use. And um, I'm saying this to you guys to be careful right because when venus goes retrograde in this house i'm not saying you're going to be scammed but i'm saying that things like this are more likely to occur or to be a problem for you you don't click the link you report the phone numbers and you keep it moving because this is also a house that is about stimulating your mental space it's important that you are actively doing things to remain stimulated because the retrograde can just make you feel exhausted and um sometimes it can be maybe you want to pick up an old project it could be maybe you started a blog right and you never really went back to finish it but you might choose to go back i don't like venus retrograding for starting a new project but i like it for returning to an old one i don't recommend publishing things through this house during the retrograde but i recommend going back to things so maybe if it's something that you can you know perhaps spend more time on but maybe you can spend more time on it you know spending more time writing on it perfecting the website making it all pretty this will be a really good time for you to um this can really help you with your mental stability and being able to stay focused those of you who have problems with siblings and a lot of people that you know are sad risings with capricorn in here do have a sibling with a problem or you guys do have some issues um, being close to your siblings, this is a good time to get off your chest and say how you're feeling. I don't wanna say hash things out. I will say try to make amends. Do some reflecting on maybe what your behavior was like, what things you have said. And think about Capricorn as taking responsibility being responsible for, you know what, I shouldn't have said that. You're right, you know, I shouldn't have said that. I apologise. And that's it. It just takes you to just say sorry. But I recommend, this is great for siblings, the people who you work with, um, cousins. Um, but say things that makes you feel, but say things to show them appreciation. You know, I appreciate you. You're my sibling. You're going to be there regardless. Say things to make that person feel good because your words right now are going to be words that people will remember so be mindful of what it is you're saying sag suns sag rising venus will be going retrograde through your second house the second house is the house of your self-esteem value worth your possessions your items how you make your money um and whenever i see venus going through this house there's usually a sense of security I feel secure and this could be maybe you've had a lot maybe you go to work right and you get paid all right but maybe you've been paid quite a lot this month and you're feeling very secure in how much money is in your bank now Venus goes retrograde once he hits the 26th degree 
And what's annoying about that is that that can now rock, you know, that feeling of security that you've just had. Maybe you've had to fork out a lot of money to spend to fix something. Maybe you're having to spend a lot of money in a particular area, but there's going to be some financial issues during this time. And it can make you really feel different in terms of how you viewed money prior. And it's so annoying because like Venus retrograde will make you reflect on the times where you have spent money wastefully, where you have felt like, damn, you know, um, I shouldn't have spent money on that. And now I need the money. I want to, I want to go retail therapy. I want to go and do some shopping. I want to have some fun. And suddenly now the money's just not there. And you've got to really reevaluate. Well, actually, should I go shopping right now or should I do some more overtime? Should I go shopping right now or should I go and do something else that's going to have more of an effect on making me feel secure? How else can I make money? I've lost my job. Sometimes people lose their jobs, you know? Sometimes people get paid less and that can have a really negative effect on, you know, your ability to feel secure. So now we're thinking about different ways that you can make money. And those of you who watched the beginning of my video where I spoke about Venus retrograding in general, if you haven't watched that part, please go and watch the beginning of the video. Very, very important. Um, because we are in a time right now, this is Cap Capricorn energy. You guys are gonna be directly affected by some sort of company or government. This could be, you know, who you work for, um, that are probably going to fuck with your money or um, overtax you, who knows? But there's going to be an issue in that area. And it's about you, like that should be enough to really piss you off and think, you know what, I've worked for this company for five years. I've given you five years of my life. Why can't you guys support me where I need it? So we see you reevaluating, should I even work here? Let me work somewhere else. What I need you guys to do to really look after yourself because it's, I don't want to say it's avoidable, but the outcome could be very different. And a way to prepare for having less money is to have a savings account, is to, um, I don't want to say look for a new job, but look for a side hustle. Because side hustles, you make money based on how hard you work, right? But even if you've got a new job somewhere else, like if you've got a new job like next week or whatever, you're still going to have an issue because Venus is still going to be retrograding. So I recommend that you put yourself in a position where you are striving to use your creativity to be a little bit more productive. You might be great at laying wigs, at slaying wigs. You might be able to do nails. You might be able to write really, really well. Freelance. Make a bit of money here or there. Put that money away for a rainy day because a rainy day is going to come. And we all like to feel valued. We all like to have money in the bank. We all like that feeling. But it's about you starting to reevaluate how you're making that money. Capricorn suns and Capricorn risings, Venus will be going through your first house. The first house is the house of your physical appearance, persona, identity, and it's your outlook on life. I say this every time there's a Venus retrograde, you don't wanna change your appearance, yeah? There's nothing to change here. Don't cut your hair, don't dye your hair. You dye your hair, you might get a bloody reaction. You cut your hair, they might cut too much off. You might shave a ball patch in your head. You do something different that you wouldn't normally do. It doesn't always turn out how it's supposed to. Even in terms of having an operation, those of you who are going for operations, those of you who are going for procedures, don't do it. So my friend rang me. He was like, oh, you know, I'm planning to have my hairline done. I want to do a, um, a hair transplant. I goes, okay, you know, when? And he goes, oh, I want to do it in December. I goes, hold one when in December I was like no you have Venus retrograde starting and you never start a project especially if it's a physical cosmetic project because these are things that people um where mistakes happen you know the doctor might come in the doctor who's supposed to be operating on you 
may have maybe sick that day so a different doctor comes in things like that happening and that's why you do not do cosmetic things during venus retrograde because anything can go wrong so i said to him no it's not a good idea on that day and i said to him just start it off next year in 2022 and um things should be a little bit better for him but um yeah nothing in terms of cosmetics don't try anything new however it's a great time to do research on a really good doctor it's a great time to if you're trying to do you know if you're trying to get your boobs done you know you want to get some fillers whatever your whatever your thing might be um it's a good time or even or even a makeup artist whatever it might be it's a great time to do some research spend some time on getting to know um the doctor who you are i'm um, trying to consult with or spend some time just learning a little bit about the procedure looking up on the risks how of how they're going to be affecting you are you allergic to anything like learning a little bit more just so you can be completely clued up by the time venus is done retrograding you can go ahead and do it if it's something you still want to do this is actually a good time to do some reflecting on um how others might perceive you you know do you dress in a conservative way do you always wear suits everywhere you go do you always wear casual clothes like tracksuits wherever you go i don't want to sit here and say oh you know be insecure about how you look i want to sit here and say think about how you are representing yourself is it how you want the public to receive you do you want them to think of you think differently of you based on how you look if that's the case do some reflecting think about where this insecurity if it is one may come from but why do you now want to make a change because what always happens here is there's always this need to I want to reinvent myself and be a better person based on how I'm looking so if that is the case what more could you do sometimes this can be a time where people you know have something to say about how you look um, when was it? I think it was last year when Venus was retrograding through my first house and um, the annoying thing about that time was people would leave comments on my YouTube channel oh my god are you pregnant oh my god when's the baby due and it was happening consistently but it's like it started from then and my appearance I have been a big girl for for years for a long time but my weight fluctuates all the flipping time and it annoys me because something like that that's so sacred and private if i haven't said it to you why would you say it and then expect me to say yeah yeah i am if i was and even if i wasn't you're basically saying that i'm fat i know i am but you haven't got to say it because i know and even if i was how does that affect you like how how does it affect you that's my point so you're likely to have people have comments on your appearance um that can rub you the wrong way and it can just make you reflect on right what what's going on with myself or do you know what i mean so just start thinking you know a little about how you're looking and how you want to be portrayed aquarius suns and aquarius risings venus is going to be retrograding through your 12th house the 12th house is the house of your unconsciousness your escapism past life grief sorrow sadness collective institutions whilst venus is going through this house right you're going to have this urge where you want to be on your own nothing's wrong with this i look at venus as your personal pleasures the things you like to do to pleasure yourself that could be sitting in your house reading a book that could be watching netflix i don't know whatever you're into but venus going through this house is more of a thing where i want to protect you know myself and and also look after my boundaries i have boundaries and i want to become a lot more aware of that the retrograde is making you reflect on this are you protecting your boundaries enough so for example, um, one thing about me, as, as, a, as a 12th house, 8th house person, I have boundaries everywhere. And it's very difficult when I've worked a full day's work and all I wanna do is come home and be in my own space. But my phone's ringing, you know, my phone's ringing. Tell me about my, this guy who likes me. Tell me about this, or I like this guy. I don't care for it. 
I just want to have some mental peace and create inner peace for myself. I don't want to hear about this guy who you've met 10 minutes ago. I don't care about that. So I tell my friends, do not call me after this time. Do not call me before this time. You will not get a response. So it's about you creating boundaries to protect your inner world, your inner peace. And I think it's important for you guys to figure out different ways how you can do that, um, where you are looking out for yourself first, always. The challenging thing about this house is that this does link us to illusions and confusions, right? And disillusionment. So when Venus comes in here and it's retrograding, it can be very hard for you to see how to value myself. If we're looking at relationships, your friendships, are you getting what you want from them? You may not think you are, you may think you are, but in reality, you're, you're not. So you might have a conversation with someone who's saying, oh, you know what, that's not a really good friend. A friend should stick up for you, a friend should have been there for you. And that's not the first time it's happened, is it? Things like that, other people putting things in your ear, and you're questioning, mm, maybe they're right, maybe I shouldn't have done this or done that. Do you get what I mean? So that's why for me, I will probably use this time um, to listen to what people have to say and then build up my own idea um, of what I think is going on. Sometimes as well, I relate this energy, um, I relate the 12th house to losses. And we can experience losing things, you know, in this house in terms of um, relationships, in terms of money, um, in terms of losing our sense of value. And what you have to try and understand about the energy is it's about you working on being a lot more secure by spending more time alone thinking about your sense of values, thinking about your Venus energy. Because the more time you spend alone and not deflecting from that house by being distracted by others, the more aware you become of what you could be doing or what you are or not doing at the moment. Those people who have less, people who are homeless, people who are in shelters, institutions, it's a great time to give back. Um, financially you can you know donate to a charity I don't I'm not big on charities at all I'd rather give to the person um, but charities might be something that you could be interested in but I would probably do something nice bake a cake make a platter of sandwiches and take it to a place where you know people are homeless or they're in a place of need donate old clothes this is more so a house of giving you know it's not about you receiving, but do a nice gesture for someone who needs it. And it really creates this warm feeling within. Pisces suns and Pisces risings. You guys have Venus going through your 11th house. The 11th house is the house of your social circles, organizations, networks, groups, affiliates, this house of your wishes and your dreams. Venus retrograding can bring some friendship travel. And remember, the thing is with, you know, Venus, it's about my sense of value, you know, um, how I want to make my money, right? And what we're seeing is you might have a really good time with a friend, right? Going out to a party or something because Venus is transiting through this house. Then it goes retrograde. Then we see a friend starting a rumour or um, you feeling very undervalued based on how a friend has treated you since the party or just feeling just feeling just not getting what you need from a friend and sometimes this can create falling outs breakups and also if you're planning on having a party a gathering an event I wouldn't have it during the Venus retrograde if it's going through your 11th house it's like um it could be your birthday and something can go wrong. I'm not saying it definitely is, but something can go wrong. And this can create some problems <laughs> um, in terms of things just going smoothly. Sometimes people may not turn up. There can be an issue with um, the event managers, the, the venue, um, something, just something going wrong. I wouldn't, 
I think if it was me, I'd have something small and I'd try and like manage everything on my own that I could, but I wouldn't do something very big. So like getting married, <laughs> things like that, I wouldn't do it, join Venus retrograde. But I also, I just wouldn't have anything very big and extravagant. This house is also about the goals that you want to achieve, your wishes and your dreams. And you might do some self-reflecting um, or reflecting on your relationships with your friends. You might feel like, you know what, yeah, I don't think my friend's serious about life. You know, I want to progress with my business and my, my, my great job. My friend is just being a bum and she's just enjoying life how she wants to enjoy life. And that's, that's great for her. But for me, I want to be around people who are going to inspire me, who are going to put me through this and, and teach me that. And your friend is just not taking you there. So you might feel like your friends are holding you back. And you might do some reflecting on that. And it's okay because we need to reflect and we need to be around people who are going to inspire us. But you've also got to think about how can I network with people who are going to teach me more about where I want to be, who are going to inspire me. And that's where I recommend social media to your advantage. If you have a business, it's a great time to do some reflecting on social media, with social media, learning about marketing, learning about Facebook ads, learning about what's that shit called? Drop shipping, you know, how to make some money. You might go into a business like that, but it's a great time for learning about those things, not necessarily starting it, but doing more research and also networking with the right people to put you into the right direction. You might have an old friend who reaches out to you or an old relationship or an ex, right? Um, I won't say don't engage with them, but I will say, what are you trying to gain out of it? It's actually a good time. Um, what did I do? I think when Venus was retrograding for me, I didn't reach out to an ex to say, oh, I'm so sorry for how things went and da da da. I reached out to get birth information to see why, you know, it didn't work out. But it was, it, it felt settling for me that it didn't work out once I saw the birth chart. So if you're going to reach out to an ex, what are your intentions? What do you want from that? The same way if an ex reaches out to you and you in, and you respond, what do you want from that? You have to set your intentions. And again, I don't ever recommend it during the Venus retrograde if your intentions are to always want more because it will never go in the direction that you want it to go in, okay? So people, that is the video through all the signs. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any comments, drop them below. I look forward to hearing it.